Hi, I'm Amy with Superior Threads and welcome to our Maker Profile where once a month we sit down with makers, crafters, and sewists just like you and talk about what inspires them and things they like to do. with Superior Threads and I'm here to do our first ever maker profile. I have invited my good friend Megan Best um, to come talk with us about um, specifically on the Superior Threads line the Magnifico and the Fantastico. Um, Megan and I are friends and we run around in the same circles because we're in the same industry. We get to see each other at shows and stuff and events and we chat and um, we were chatting not long ago about our love of Magnifico and Fantastico. And Megan is a prolific um, embroidery person, um, not only on her embroidery machine, but also embroidery on her long arm. And I asked her if she'd chat with me on our first maker profile and um, talk about that. I do wanna say that um, we are filming this still in the pandemic. Megan is in her studio at her home. And where are you, Megan? Uh, Northwest Washington, just north Northwest. of Bellingham, Washington. Yeah, I, I knew kind of where you were, but I wasn't sure the name of your town. And I actually am in Boring, Oregon, and we are both in our studios. This is actually my thread wall in my studio. That's her stuff behind her. And um, we're going to have a little chat with Megan. And Megan, why don't you... Um, Tell us about using Magnifico and Fantastico um, in your embroidery projects. Okay. Um, first off, I've been embroidering for a, probably 25 years since embroidery machines first came out. So um, I really like embroidery. Um, I've gone through several embroidery machines, um, several different processes of threads that break, which don't. Uh, Magnifico doesn't break. Um, it's a really strong thread. Um, it is my thread of choice now for embroidery as well as quilting because it's a strong thread and it won't break. Um, so it's more fuss free than any other threads. Um, in my embroidery classes, I actually do a break test where I break thread and I can break all the threads, but Magnifico and Fantastico, if you break them, you're going to cut your fingers. So <laughs> it's just that's good to know. Um, yes. For people watching, let me really say we're talking specifically about Magnifico and Fantastico. They are yes. our 40 weight trilobal polyester thread. Go ahead, pull that mm -hmm. up. That one up. So, so this is the something I just pulled off of my embroidery machine a few minutes ago. And if I go and try and break it and break this, oh, that one broke. Gosh, mm -hmm. let's see the Magnifico. I can see you have to pull pretty hard on that. Oh yeah, you have to pull pretty hard. That fell on the ground. <laughs> so if I pull this one and start to break it, I mean, you can see that it's gonna cut my fingers if I yeah. try. And that, yeah. there's no way. I mean, I still have a dent in my finger that yeah. it just yeah. doesn't break. So right. so, um, so our, what I was saying is our Fantastico Magnifico or 40 weight tri-level poly ester thread, which, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a faceted thread, so it really catches the light and shiny. This is one of my favorite. This is Disco. What's your favorite? That's my favorite. Let oh, me see yours. I, I like that. Well, this is the one I'm used today, so it's my favorite. That's your favorite today. That's kind of how we roll. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a five one one eight. Yeah. Oh, well, my the one I just did was fifty thirty two. Um, I love how, look at this gold, how shiny and pretty that is. This is um, Magnifico 2069. Yeah. We also have it in spools um, oh, yeah. on both lines, which is super fun. Um, yep. I call it the beauty queen of the thread world because it's so oh, pretty. Absolutely. And the one thing that I like to tell people when I'm doing this is, these are the most important things that you have. I, I use these every single day. These are the color cards. So 
on the Fantastico. I don't have all the Fantastico. I have all of these. <laughs> awesome. Like all 200. I bought them all. I used them all. Um, I love being able to have the full selection of colors mm -hmm. in my um, portfolio. That's right. so important. Fantastico. Mm -hmm. I don't have them all, but you can see all the little dots where I have them. Right. So, you know, you got I got a lot of them, them yeah. but I don't have them all. Um, but I love them. I love the, um, the variegated that are bright contrast for myself, but I do run a quilting business as well. And so for that, I tend to use more of the, um, the monochromatic ones. So yeah. yesterday on a quilt, I used a tan monochromatic. It was the tans and browns. And it's just gorgeous. It's just a subtle um, sparkle to a quilt. Right, right. I love that. And for uh, those of you watching, uh, you can get those color cards off our website. Mm -hmm. Anyone can purchase them and we're happy to send them out. I recommend people buy the whole line of color cards because you just never know what color mm -hmm. you might need. And it's a good way to keep track of your thread inventory. So even if you're just a a hobby sewist or a professional like Megan. And I've been buying uh, superior threads since they started, like the very awesome. first year they started. So I'm a long, 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 long time customer. Um, we are happy for that for sure. Um, um, so I've been using the Magnifico though. I got the whole line in 2016, mm -hmm. um, which I, I, it came up on my Facebook memories. You know, we love it. <laughs> Um, but it it kind of gave me a whole boost in how I embroider um, because of you know you have all the colors you're not limited to hmm I can't embroider that today because I don't have the thread today mm -hmm. um, and so you, this way I I have them all so mm -hmm. and for those that do a lot of different projects like quilting and um, whether it's on a long arm or a machine and embroidery, you don't have to buy two different types of thread because this is great thread for all of it. Um, mm -hmm. So tell me about how, show me some stuff that you've embroidered or about how, how you go about uh, picking your thread and what you're doing and things like that. So in embroidering, I like to do things that are, you know, blocks that add to, that are part of a quilt. Um, where I've used quite a variety of things. Um, this happens to be on a linen fabric. Um, really pretty, fun things. Um, here's another one, more of a fun one. But oh, in I love that. Out, I know, I love that too. Um, in picking out the colors, the companion to this one, and these are done on my home embroidery machine. Um, I, I quilt or uh, embroider on a Janome 500. So I can do an embroidery about um, eight by 11. So on this one, the next one right here, I kind of followed a color conversion as suggested. Um, and it didn't come out so well. I don't like the way the skin looks. I don't, I don't like any of it. Even this one, I don't like that. So I decided I would use my own brain and I pull up the thread colors on the charts that they provide in, um, let's pull up this one. On the, when you buy a design, you have a thread chart. So I pull this up on my computer and I zoom way in and I start picking the colors from my thread chart with me, not by what they're telling me it should be because that's so not, does not work. So I actually just zoom in on each of the colors, and then I can pick from them. Um, for this particular design, I have, oh wait, do you see all those colors? Yep, I see those. Those are my Magnificos that I chose for this design. Gotcha. Um, and so I was able to pull all of them out. I do keep them in numerical order so that I can pull them out in numerical order. Um, mm -hmm. And I write a little cheat sheet, which colors mm -hmm. are which, which numbers. And I do keep these, I print these out. Um, for all of my designs. Um, so if you go back and stitch that same design again, you've already done the, the work for it. You just look at the chart. I've already done the work for it. Um, if we could all be as organized as you, that sounds lovely. Well, and I, you know, I've done a lot of the designs where I, I do print them out on everything. Mm -hmm. 
Um, cause sometimes I'm so busy that I'm not going to pay attention. Right. Um, and that way it allows me to, um, you know, I mean, on all of them, I've truly, I make sure to make sure to, to do all of this. Oh, this one, let's see right here, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. which is a, let's see if that's, oh, it's my computer bag. Oh, lovely. That's so fun. Because, because I do a lot of embroidery. It is, um, I added more post-it notes because my desk is a hot mess of post-it notes. So that's awesome. Know, I added more post-it notes. Yeah. So that's, it's kind of the way I roll. I print out all of that and make sure that I follow them and I'm following on my screen. Number one is number one, um, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a, a program called Adobe Capture that you can download to your cell phone. Um, and so if I wanted the roses on this one, which here is that one that I just showed you to be, mm -hmm. oh, oh that's pretty. pretty. Yeah, I did that yesterday. So if I wanted th this rose here to match a specific rose in my garden, I could take a picture of it and then it would um, bring up the colors. And so I could pick my thread from the actual items. Oh, awesome. So that's kind of a really cool, um, really cool thing. So that sounds great. Anyway. Yeah. So anyway, the more I started embroidering and I started playing, here's another quilt. Usually this. Oh, I love that. It hangs right behind my long arm. I did not quilt through the embroidery. Um, and if you kind of look, it kind of has that, um, uh, bulletproof shield look. Right. Because, and I don't necessarily like that. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you can't really tell as much on this. You can see like right here, it kind of puffs out. Yes. Um, not my favorite way to do things. I decided I'm going to quilt over all the embroidery. I prefer that. So I quilt right through my embroidery with bottom line thread or sometimes oh, wow. micro quilter. Mm -hmm. And truly, you cannot tell that I'm quilting through it. So when I have a design, mm -hmm. it doesn't have that bulletproof shield look. Gotcha. And I have quilted right through it. Can oh, yeah, I can that? see that. But you really can't. Mm -hmm. So I use these for like pictures. Um, this is one of the first ones that I started with and did on my long arm. So did you um, quilt the background first and then embroider it or embroider it and then quilt it? I embroider it first and quilt it. Because truly, most embroideries, when you're done, mm -hmm. they're like this. Mm -hmm. They're not flat. They come out of the hoop with a wiggle waggle. Um, and so if I can quilt over it, it quilts all the bad stuff away. Oh, good advice. I'm also a very lazy embroiderer. Um, I use one kind of um, stabilizer. It's called fusible fleece. That's all. Mm -hmm. So that's all I do. Um, I, I know there's a hundred different stabilizers and I could go to stabilizer college and figure them out, but I like to just make quilted sandwiches mm -hmm. and I make a lot of them, a lot of them. Um, gotcha. So, because they're really pretty. I mean, that's that is, thing. it's beautiful. And these um, have, this one has one set of the colors of the pinks. And this one has a different kind of a difference. They're actually different, uh, two different sets of three pinks. Mm -hmm. One is more pink wow. and one is more peach, but they're both different Magnifico sets. Um, and these ones I enlarged to put on my long arm. So it's the same design, only monstrously big in comparison. So the two next to each other, you can see. So the smaller one you did on your Janome with your embroidery module and the other, the larger one you did on your long arm. Uh-huh. Gotcha. So That's amazing. It's, and you teach a class on how to transfer embroidery designs to long arms, right? 
Yeah, it's not just about the transfer. It's about the transfer. It's about the success of multiple colors and making sure that you get them right, um, how you hoop. I mean, there's all kinds of parts to that process. It's not just um, converting the design from an embroidery file to a long arm file. There's so much more. Um, okay. I've done probably 80 or 90 of these large uh -huh. ones. I have stacks and stacks and stacks of them. Well, we'll make sure to put your webpage, um, bestquilter.com. We'll also put it in the um, notes below. So if people want to go to your website and check out that class, they certainly can. That'd be great. But yeah, I, I do a lot of them. They're pretty. Oh, wow. Um, that one's colorful. Um, yeah, that one's colorful, I think. And I have a big one of that, too. I can tell which ones are which when I'm looking at them by the binding. <laughs> I bind, I always make the small one and the large one at the same time. And so the big tree is huge. Oh, I and love that. So it's absolutely huge. It's amazing. It, that, hold that up again. It looks like it's like backlit with light. It's, it does. So you hold I the whole thing up, it looks like it's shining, like it's almost got like a glow to it. Well, what would be great is if I had used glow in the dark thread here. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but you but almost do. don't even need it. What? Um, and um, that was all done with Magnifico? Yes, all Magnifico thread and just layered over the purple fabric. So each one of them, each one of the colors is just layered in there. Um, and I don't, when I blow them up, mm -hmm. they are also, I am also blowing apart the density. So the gotcha. density of the small one is, you know, it's very uh, close together. And so mm -hmm. when I make it bigger, it becomes farther apart and much more of a watercolor effect. So you Oh, I see. So the smaller one, it's more of what we consider traditional embroidery stitches, like a satin <laughs> stitch. And the one on the long arm, it's more spaced, uh, more spacing right. between the stitches. So it's a little more muted. Right. Yeah. Um, and I love doing um, the long arm and the embroidery. It's cool. It's fun. These are big pictures. They're like posters. Um, the, the flowers that are like this would be great, like for my mother-in-law's bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just beautiful florals. Um, but I don't do every single one larger. First off, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of fabric and a huge amount of time. That tree probably took five or six hours. Gotcha. Whereas it took maybe an hour on my embroidery machine. Gotcha. So well, the results are stunning. So it's definitely worth it. Right. I mean, I keep, you know, I do a lot of them mm -hmm. and every single one I finish. Well, um, I'm sorry. Most of them I finish. I have <laughs> a stack that aren't quite finished, which means they're not quilted. Um, what I would do is if I have extra on the bottom of a quilt of a back, mm -hmm. I could throw on these to quilt them because I do embroider them first and I quilt them later. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've got the Christmas tree hangs in my house. Um, I put one in my living room and then I can put one in another room because I have the little one as well. Um, some of them are, you know, they're just so stinking cute. You just have to make them. Right. You have to. Um, and then I just, I mean, I love, love doing them. Um, I do oh, have awesome. pictures of a lot of them with the actual colors of Magnifico. So okay. when I take, when I take it, when I take its portrait, when I'm done, maybe that's the way it should go. Um, <laughs> I take a picture with the thread colors. So awesome. I have a record in my cell phone. That's um, a really good idea. Oh Yeah. Cause I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm dumb as a rock when I'm done, when I'm done with a project. Right. Another done and forget. One. Right. Yeah. This that's one, beautiful. I did add a border. Um, the other thing that I look at when I'm doing my embroideries, whether that's small or large is how I border the design so that it looks nice hanging up. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go into Google and ask questions like um, proportions for uh, framing, you can come across better proportions. So on this particular one, it has a nice proportion on the outside. Mm -hmm. When I did the large version on my long arm, um, I made it square because mm -hmm. the fabric was smaller. 
and it looks stupid, but it's beautiful gotcha. and it's just hanging on my living room wall. So it's just not <laughs> as pretty. Yeah. But this one needed a little bit of border fabric. And so I added this afterwards after I did the embroidery. But so uh, I know as um, embroidery uh, people that do embroidery and have embroidery modules on their machines. Um, back in the day, we really just had one type of thread that everybody bought for their embroidery machines. And now we have so many more options like the Magnifico and Fantastico, mm -hmm. where, you know, even 15 years ago, that would not have been considered an embroidery thread. So no. um, are you finding that it still embroiders beautifully and coverage covers your designs exactly oh. like you're intending? Oh, yeah. Um, this is one of the, I just finished this this morning. It's a set of three designs. Let's see if I've got a picture of the other two. So here's the other two designs. There's a lighthouse, a ship, and a whale. Uh-huh, I love those. So I wanna, and I, so I made it small. Mm -hmm. And the three of these will be a beautiful vignette in a, in a room. Mm -hmm. um, I used the Fantastico on there. So you can see the color variations in here. Right. Um, Fantastico. It, it's yeah, only very the thread. Yeah. Slight variations of kind of a bluish green and greens. Yes. And then this bottom one has navies. Right. And then the top color is a much lighter version, uh, more light blues. Um, so those are right here. Um, those are awesome. That's beautiful. So these are my Fantastico colors that I use. So they're just gorgeous in that. Um, I can't wait to make those. Um, I really would love to make those as large pillows, make them on my long arm and do them on a, like a faux leather mm -hmm. or real soft butter faux leather. That'd be great. So, that would be beautiful. We'll have to have you back when those are done so we can see them. Yeah, a lot of times these things just sit in my head for a really, 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 really long time. <laughs> they don't have the leather um, and I don't have the time right now. Um, right. It would probably take maybe two hours, hour and a half to two hours each on the long arm. Gotcha. So, so that's kind of one of those things. Um, but even this, this one right here, oh, it just popped out of the hoop. Yeah, this one is pretty flat out of the mm -hmm. hoop. Mm -hmm. But usually I press the crap out of them. Here's the back of them. Um, mm -hmm. um, on embroidery, you do generally have the top thread go to the back a little bit. It's a little more successful. Um, for bottom thread, I use. Yay. Pre-round, um, the pre-round uh, masterpiece. Mm -hmm. um, so I buy a couple, I have dark ones for dark and a couple light ones and tan ones. And then I always buy the mixed grouping, mm -hmm. um, which I have many of them. I like always, if I, once I open up a box, I want the next one. And they have the soft colors and the bright colors. Mm -hmm. And I use so that. So that's the well. masterpiece is our 100% um, cotton 50 weight line. And it comes in pre-wound bobbins, which I'm a pre-wound girl. I love pre-wound. So that's good to know. I use those in my machine as well. I buy whole little packets. Mm -hmm. This is the bright one. I match yeah. all my piecing thread like a hundred percent of the time. Um, I'm not a neutral thread person for the most part. These are for embroidery. Mm -hmm. These for piecing. I match every single one. Gotcha. So my next question is on your embroidery, you're really just using the neutrals. You don't change your bottom, your bobbin color out, do you? Except for the dark. Usually when okay. I do the outline, I change it for the darkest colors um, just because it's a little more successful. So um, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So I, I love the pre-wounds for, for my um, machine and they're really good pre-wounds. I can use them. I can reuse those bobbins. I don't, but I could, I have. Yeah. Right. Um, so if a, there's a beginner embroidery person out there, like they, maybe they just bought a brand new, um, sewing machine that has an embroidery module on it. Do you have any advice for them? Start simple. Don't do something that has, you know, this many thread colors. You want to do something that has 
three thread colors. Oh, not that one, sorry. <laughs> thread colors. Right. Two thread colors. You know, start simple. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. The ones with, um, you know, 20 and 30 colors uh, take forever. Um, and they're worth it. But mm -hmm. they do take a really long time. Um, start simple. Um, I, I purchase a lot of designs online every week, almost. Um, I go to mostly embroidery library. Um, what else? Urban Threads mm -hmm. and um, OESD are the three mm -hmm. places that I've gotten designs from. Um, and truly... Start simple. Don't don't do things with multi, too many colors. Uh, gotcha. Simple colors is really much easier. Um, make sure you take your classes at the store that you're at, um, so that you can learn uh, what you like. Number one, you don't mm -hmm. want to start one of you know as your first project. Start one of those tiled quilt pictures, which I have a <laughs> couple of them. I haven't done them yet. Um, right. It's a pretty big commitment because you have to do like a little square, whatever and do it, you know, 25 or 35 or 40 times different, um, designs and then mm -hmm. sew them back together. So gotcha. they're beautiful, but they also take, you know, probably a full cone of some of the colors. Mm -hmm. So that's really good advice. I get that a lot, uh, when I'm helping other makers and things mm -hmm. like that, especially beginners, they, they see something beautiful and they start in the hobby, but then they go to sometimes the most, one of the most difficult designs. So starting mm -hmm. off simple is great advice and then work your way up. Um, so yeah. that those bigger pieces aren't quite so hard. Those more intricate pieces aren't quite so overwhelming. Oh, exactly. I mean, when I've, you know, some of the designs, this one is probably five or six colors. Mm -hmm. They get a beautiful design, you know, that, this one here is probably, oh, maybe 15 or 20 colors. Mm -hmm. um, lots of jumps, you know, if learn how your machine does jumps, cause it'll do from this one to this one, to this one, to this one. And it has the same color that jumps all over. You have to learn how you and your machine work together before you continue on. Um, one of, oh, this one right here. This is one of my favorites. Um, oh, I love that sunflowers and it's probably maybe six or eight colors mm -hmm. um, I also did this one larger and it is the most beautiful watercolor look of many of them I could have a cascade of quilts over there <laughs> oh I love that just gorgeous um, but successful it's not too satiny and too dense Mm -hmm. And it, you, you just set yourself up for success if you work simply first. Awesome. As opposed to, you know, some of those super dense ones. They're beautiful. And even I uh, hesitate to do them too often just because it's a, a bigger time commitment. And, you know, um, I don't shut my machine off in between, even though it does remember where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily shut my machine down. So in between designs, um, what are some of the other good ones? Oh, another good one. Is that one right side up? Yep. And all of them, they are quilted right through the embroidery. Right. Can't even tell. And my quilting thread is the same color as my background. Mm -hmm. and it I love that you do that. It does seem to like flatten it out a little bit and then um, like turn it over on the back. I love the fact that you quilt it afterwards so that you don't have the back of the embroidery showing. Exactly. That makes such a nice thing. Yeah. It's such a nice finish. I mean, when you look at the back of the actual embroidery, let's see the back of this one. I would never show that on the back of a quilt. It doesn't look pretty, although this one looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. There's a few spots right in the middle. Right. That are less those are, they're knots. You're not going to show that, you know, when I quilt this up, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. And you're it's right. Really you know, I would probably personally tend to try not to quilt over that embroidery, but now that I see how you've done it, it really mm -hmm. does flatten it out and it looks great. Mm -hmm. And I show people that, that pink one where I did go around the embroidery and I show them going over embroidery and then they can, they look at the both of them and they say, Oh, hmm, it doesn't matter you know, because 
before we've been taught that going over embroidery, the same as going over applique is an absolute no-no. And I go over both. Right. I do both. You know, it's, it's quite a difference. Um, here's another one, a little more satiny, mm -hmm. little denser embroidery. Right. Um, and then I did an, a large version of that as well. He's huge. Um, oh, that is big. Yeah. In my living Love room. Love that. This one fits in, in a, I have a narrow wall in between two long windows and this fits in there. And the texture that it shows in that light in that room is beautiful. So awesome. that's where it'll hang for spring. Right now I have like a winter quilt. So it just fits right in that wall. I can change it out. Um, here's another one, simple. This one is again, OESD, a little bit more dense embroidery. But the big one I absolutely adore, darker background. And my lighting is showing the quilting more, but right. the embroidery is actually um, comes out better in the lighting in my dining room. Gotcha. And again, that would be a in my dining room one. Um, I also have lots that are not done. Right. Well, that's Elephant. cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got some done on newsprint backgrounds. Oh, that's fun. Isn't it? I, well, and of course, because I, I do buy all of them in a, in a series, I've mm -hmm. got butterflies um, and these sunflowers. Oh, wow. I and love that on top of the newsprint. That's really cute. Yeah. So I've got those ones done. And then I've got lots and lots of small ones that are done. I love that one. Oh, wait, this one's even better. I like flowers. Oh, I love that one too. So they're, and then, I, oh wait, these are for my kitchen. They're really, really cute. I just bought a few more to match in. I just don't have the same binding. Um, so I have to like do some coordinate. Oh, I love those. And then our favorite, mm -hmm. the macaroni. Oh, yeah. And these are just small little ones, but with the right amount of parameter, these will hang beautifully in my kitchen. Right. Um, and then I've got, you know, cotton. This one is really pretty. I love yeah. that. I love that color. That one I do like a lot. I love that barn. Wait there. This one has a coordinate because, you know, I always have a coordinate. I have not done these larger. This one has a tractor. Um, reminds me of my grandfather's tractor. So these right. ones will hang together. Um, I don't, I tend to make the quilting not necessarily match, but coordinate. So, and then some more spring flowers, some tulips, yeah. daffodils, and- Those are just beautiful. Um, and yeah, I just, I have a sickness. These are the ones that aren't <laughs> hanging in my house. I did not go and grab these. These are ones that I've just, been, I pull around and take to uh, trunk shows, et cetera. So gotcha. I, I just have a lot of them. Well, that's awesome. I have more. I mean, I have more. <laughs> Well, that what we might have to do a, a segment, a, a, a sequel to this so we can see all the other ones as well. So, well, well Megan, I, let me here's, just, oh. here's my bindings for this. I'm not sure if it's going to oh, be yeah. that one or this one. I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll have to take a poll. You can, our viewers can let us know which binding they like better on that one. <laughs> yeah, it, so. it, it's part of how I finish it when I'm planning it. I'm pulling out the thread. And I'm picking out my uh, bindings as well mm -hmm. to see. I buy a lot of striped bindings mm -hmm. um, just because I think that finishes it off nicely. I don't do face faced edges. I just mm -hmm. do uh, traditional bindings. Mm -hmm. so. It gives that nice uh, frame look to it. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the way it, it, it finishes. They come out very flat. They hang on the wall beautifully. Awesome. So. Well, I've really enjoyed talking to you and seeing all your examples and love the fact that you just love Magnifico and Fantastico. I can't see, can't wait to see what else you do. Um, no, just you wait. Maybe, <laughs> maybe something new. It might, maybe it'll be this as pillows. I don't know. I have so many embroidery designs that, right. you know, I just can't wait to do the next one. If I try That's and keep awesome. this machine running. While my long arm, which is right over there, runs as well. Oh, that's so. awesome. Double duty then. So, 
That's well, right. thanks, Megan. And remember, she's Megan Best at bestculture.com. We will put this across the screen and in the notes. And I really enjoyed talking to you. I can't wait to see you again. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us.